Hi, everyone. Before I get to the episode, I want to take a moment to address the United States Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade on June 24th, which stripped away the right to have a safe and legal abortion. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion, threatens the health and independence of all people, which we have already seen with abortion bans and restrictions in countries like Poland and Malta. This decision has dire consequences and could have harsh repercussions for other landmark decisions within the United States. I encourage our audience, American and otherwise, to learn more about what you can do to help at podvoices.help. I encourage you to speak up, take care, and spread the word. Welcome to the Elevate Podcast, conversations with women changing the face of business. And now your host, Maricela Herrera. It's Maricela Herrera here, and welcome to the Elevate Podcast. I'm here today with Joanna Polgarin from our team at Elevate. Joanna is also known as JP, <laughs> for those close. JP, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. We were just talking about how we're, we're both feeling a little tired today. I think we're feeling like the Thursday, end of the week, almost there feeling but I'm excited to be here yeah you're feeling tired because you went to a really great concert yes I did not because of any Thursday thing <laughs> I, I mean both <laughs> but yeah I had a lot of fun last night and I'm feeling it today but that's all right it was worth it for those who don't know um which is everyone basically but JP is my concert friend too we tend to go to two bunch of concerts together which is always fun I did not go to the one uh, she went yesterday, which was Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. So I'm jealous, and that's you why I'm missed. Here. You were missed. <laughs> so, Jeeps, why don't you tell everyone, all of our listeners, what you do at Elevate? Sure. So I am the Senior Program Manager at Elevate. I've been here for almost seven years now, which is insane, and A lot of what I do focuses around how our Elevate members are using their membership. So, um, you know, I I reach out to them a lot, have some conversations to just learn a little bit about about our audience, who our members are, and how we can maybe change or refine what we do at Elevate to help them meet their needs. I also help run the Rising Leaders Roundtables, which meet uh, Thursdays at noon Eastern. And those are really fun to do. Um, Allison, who is our um, VP of Corporate Partnerships, is the host there. We just got off of a really great one a little bit ago about how to be more inclusive and calling in instead of calling out, which was really great. So that's one of my favorite parts about this job is, you know, I'm helping put those events together, but I'm also, I also get to listen in and and learn a lot myself. So, yeah. I miss the Rising Leaders Roundtables. Um, I've been hosting the executive roundtables lately and they're amazing. Don't get me wrong, but it was also fun to be in the, in the Rising Leaders group. So I, I should come back. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah. I should come back and join. I've just had too many meetings. Um, one thing that you said, and it's it's interesting, right? Like I've been here 10 years, you've been here seven years. A lot of our people at Elevate stay for a really long time. And that's something I love about our company because you get to build those really deep relationships with your friends at work. But also it shows, you know, it's a good place to work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is for sure again, another one of my favorite things about working here is the relationships I've made with so many people. Like you said earlier, we have become concert buddies and we, mm-hmm. we, we travel to go see shows together, you know, and so that's the case with like so many other of our team members is we really get to know each other. Um, it's a really open space to talk and a, a place where you feel safe to have, you know, open conversations. And I think that's, that's what really creates those those relationships between us yeah I appreciate hearing that the next stop is Denver yeah um, soon go I'm excited uh, I'm excited too 
And also you were here, you started off as an intern. I was thinking actually about uh, back when I interviewed you for the internship so long ago, very recently was thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, (laughs) I was an editorial intern. So I had just graduated from Montclair State. I was an English major with minors in creative writing and journalism. And I was set that that was my path. That's what I was going to do. I was going to go into some sort of, you know, writing or publishing profession. But um, I, yeah, I started as an editorial intern and pretty quickly realized that, you know, while I loved doing that kind of work, that there was a whole other world out there of, that I had no idea about and that I really enjoyed doing too. And the team really gave me a chance too to try out a bunch of different kind of work. So from editorial intern, I moved on pretty quickly to you know, member success and then on the product team and to where I am now. So it's been, it's been a ride. Yeah. And it's making me think that's how Megan, Megan, who is our producer for this and you hear her chime in every now and then that's also how she started at Elevate as a, as an editorial intern. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. uh, JP interviewed me to be editorial (laughs) intern. (laughs) Full circle. Yay. (laughs) Well, anyway, anything you're, you you know, we always like to talk about, about kind of what we're into, anything you're want to recommend to the audience that you're into lately? Gosh, you know, I was trying to think of what I've been into lately when I was prepping with Megan before this. And truly my life has just been consumed by house furniture, living room furniture, searching for you know, home DIYs because my husband and I just bought a house recently and very exciting, very great. So overwhelming. (laughs) There's so many different things to do. Um, So everything in my free time right now is like HGTV, uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines on Fixer Upper, like I mean, all these different, um, they're fantastic. I love them. I so not much. love Chip and Joanna games. I want to be friends with them. Me it's too. So much fun. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking at furniture like anytime I'm, I have free time. It, it's kind of taken over my life at this point. And it will be like that for the next couple of months. So, and then besides that, ah, gosh, I've gotten into, I've never been a big reality TV person. Hmm. But I've gotten into Below Deck I don't know if you've watched it. I have not, but I've heard I've heard about it. I mean, it's a reality show, right? It's not exactly, you know, the best kind of thing out there for you to watch. But when you're tired from, you know, working and just need something in the background to watch and, de- and decompress, mm-hmm. that has been really fun. It's cool. And you, you, get, you get to see people living on a boat out in like these beautiful areas out in the Mediterranean or in Australia. And it's just like, God, that kind of looks like fun. Yeah. I, people, so I, I hadn't, I have never seen it, but people kept telling me about it when I was, since I did go with my family on this family trip to the Bahamas uh, mm-hmm. earlier this year, and we were on a boat, um, yeah. which was really, really fun. So I could see how it would be interesting to seeing people living their lives that way. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I haven't been into much so I actually just started reading Dune I've Ooh. never actually read it and it felt like I watched so I watched the movie actually in a flight last like the last time I flew <laughs> and I was like intrigued pleasantly intrigued by it so I just started going very very slowly but that's that's I think the what's going to be entertaining me for the next few weeks Yeah, I actually also watched that movie on a flight recently. Really? It was was a lot. It's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) It was pretty intense. Yeah, and so it made me curious to see, like, okay, what's going to happen? And I do prefer reading books before watching movies. Yeah. (laughs) So I I figured if I was going to get to, if I was ever going to watch the second part, I kind of wanted to read the book first. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing that and, uh, hanging out with my new cat. So. So is she officially your new cat? So 
I guess so. I mean, it was supposed to be a foster to adopt situation where I was going to foster her for two weeks and the two weeks have passed and no one's claimed her. <laughs> so, I mean, let's be honest here. How likely was it going to be that you were going to very easily give her up? Oh, very unlikely. <laughs> very cute. She is completely crazy and so different from Ginger, who was my my older, my old cat. Mm-hmm. Um, this one has just so much energy. It's playing all right. And I think she looks a little bit like your cat, actually. She I does a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the pictures, her, her coloring. She's like a brown and black tabby yeah. cat. She's very cute. Yeah. So Toffee has me entertained. We're still figuring each other out, but that's been my other thing. Oh, that's so exciting. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. I'm a cat mom again. Yay. Well, I'm very much looking forward to listening to this interview. This is another interview that Chrissy did before leaving. And today we're going to be hearing from Pat Headley. She's an advisor to an investor in innovative growth companies a visionary brand strategist with a broad global network of experts and resources. She counsels CEOs, entrepreneurs, and management teams. She's also the author of Meet 100 People, a how-to guide to the career and life edge everyone's missing. So let's get to Christy's interview with Pat. Hello, Pat, and welcome to the Elevate Podcast. Hello, Christy. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Let's get started just learning a bit more about you. Would you mind sharing a bit about your story with our community today? Sure, I'd be happy to. I am currently an investor and an advisor to growth companies, and I'm also an author of a book called Meet 100 People. In terms of my background, early background, um, my parents were immigrants. And I'm an introvert. And so for me to write a book uh, entitled Meet 100 People would have surprised me if someone had told me that years ago. Uh, And just a little bit on that, because it is something I'm passionate about and it's very relevant to your network. I wrote the book because it's advice I wish I had had when I was first starting out. It's advice that I give to my three adult children and young professionals all the time. And frankly, it's advice I follow myself even after a nearly 30-year career with a global growth equity firm, General Atlantic, and over the last six years, kind of reinventing what I do and how I do it. And um, it's taken me on a wonderful journey, and I get to spread the message of how important it is to meet people and build relationships. And I will say that it's impacted um, the other work that I do, which is identifying interesting growth companies investing in them personally, and then occasionally taking on advisory roles. And I've made over a dozen investments, more than half led by women. I'm incredibly proud of that. And I love helping female entrepreneurs. So that's that's a short brief on me. I have a million questions for you. Uh, and I'm just gonna, we're, we're gonna dive right in. So why would someone want to meet 100 people? There are so many reasons to meet a hundred people. A hundred is is in a way um, it's metaphorical as much as it is literal. I think the idea behind it is that you should constantly be looking to meet new people and expanding your network. And I think it's really important advice at all stages of anyone's career. Whether you're just out of school and starting to think about opportunities, it's an incredible way to learn and grow and build your own confidence to someone like me who's had, you know, arguably a really pretty good network and an incredible career having met hundreds of people over the course of the many years. And I still continue to do that. And to be honest, it's opened up so many doors for me. It's continuing to provide me with Um, learning and resources. And it's, it's actually a joyful process. And I think that most people, especially those who might be introverted, just like I am, might not think of networking as joyful. But I like to reframe people's thoughts on that, 
and make them think about it differently. And, and I know I learned about myself that what gets me over my natural reserve is the fact that I'm a super curious person and I love to learn. And I found that with everyone I meet, I'm always learning something. And it's sometimes a surprise and sometimes it's not a surprise how, how much I'm learning and how interesting conversations can be. Do you have another word you use for networking? I really think it's about relationship building and building connections. I do think networking is uh, has gotten a little bit of a bad rap. People think of it as transactional, and I don't. I really think of it as building connections between people and building relationships over time. And I think people are comfortable building personal relationships in many instances, but they're less comfortable building deep and rich professional relationships sometimes. Uh, and I know I fell into this category myself mid-career. I was so very busy with a very demanding job and three kids and a husband and a family I had to also spend some time with that I thought I didn't have time for networking. And I must say I was very short-sighted because I didn't think of it the right way. I think networking is something that you continue to do no matter what you're doing. And it is part of everybody's job. And I think it's part of everybody's job because in the process of meeting new people, whether they are people within your own firm or peers outside of your firm or people in very different roles, you're continuing to learn and educate yourself and provide yourself a different perspective that can be very, very valuable to your current employer and to your own professional development. And so, you know, I, I wish I had kind of realized this much earlier in my career. I think it would have helped accelerate my career uh, even further if I thought about it proactively and consistently. And and frankly, I think one of the one of the cop outs I used was that I didn't have time. And I've kind of rethought that. I firmly believe that if you have time to eat, you have time to meet. And it's smart to never eat alone have lunch with others, have coffee with others, have breakfast, fit it into your day as you can. In a virtual environment, do it in a, you know, do it over Zoom. There's no reason you can't have a virtual lunch with someone or a virtual coffee with someone. And there's no reason you can't invite others to join you in doing things that you already love to do. And and I read a fair bit about habits over the pandemic and, and time and time management, and it's called stacking habits. So if you like to walk, ask somebody to walk with you. If you like to do whatever, go to a workout class, invite somebody to join you, include others in the things that you're already doing, or better yet, invite a couple of people who should be meeting one another and be the person who provides that connection. And that's an efficient way to continue to nurture and build your network and the people that you know, while giving them the gift of introduction to one another. How, how do you identify who you want to meet? Like, I, I think, you know, sometimes, sometimes we're, our, I'm going to be, put it the nicest way I know how to, how to say it is we're our, our own worst enemy. Like we, we kind of create a criteria of like, who would be valuable for us to meet? And uh, that's to me, I think the wrong approach to it. I mean, everyone has value and there's just, you know, such value in people who are diversity of perspectives and career stages and locations and all of these things. Um, but how do you kind of go about uh, who you want to meet? How do you reach out to them, connect with them? What is the ask for a meeting? Like, what is, walk me through that process. I will absolutely walk you through that process. And I think the question you ask is a really important one because most people know it would be good to network and meet other people, but many people don't know how to do it. And frankly, that's why I wrote the book because I spell out the how and I'll give you the, you know, some of the quick hits on how do you do this? Honestly, the first place you start, as with anything, is with yourself. You actually have to sit down and think, okay, what are my goals? What do I want to do? How do I think of myself in three to five years? What would be good for me to learn? And who would be good for me to know to help me get there? From the perspective of learning and also from the perspective of sharing. So the first thing is trying to figure that out. That's one. 
The second is, how do you reach out to those people? I always say, start, um, start with your current circle. So people you already know and ask them to give you introductions to other people. Start with people in your firm. Most people really haven't made the consistent and proactive effort to get to know others outside of their daily work life. Join groups where you can meet other people. If there are opportunities to volunteer, volunteer where you get a chance to meet other people and or proactively reach out to others in different areas or sometimes in similar areas to your own. And I think when you reach out with the ask of, especially somebody within your own organization, could you take, you know, 20 minutes and I'd love to learn more about what you do. I'm really trying to understand, you know, how to think about my own role. And I think the best way to do that is by understanding, you know, what everybody else does. And nine times out of 10, 10 people will say, of course, of course, we'll have that conversation. So I think some of it is being proactive and thoughtful, not just in your own organization, but really proactively and consistently in your own organization. But then look at peers. And, and I ask people that I do recruiting for the companies I invest in or the companies I advise. And honestly, when we're hiring a senior role, I'm very curious how that person continues to educate themselves. Um, you know, if you're a CFO, do you meet with other CFOs? Do you join these organizations? Do you find value in doing that? I think there's a lot of value to those people who actually make that effort and do that. So, so that's the proactive outreach. But I also think there's an awful lot to be said for saying yes when somebody reaches out to you and agreeing to do things when somebody asks. And honestly, so much of the journey of my book has happened because I share my passion about this topic with people and they introduce me to others or they suggest I meet with somebody else. And sometimes I don't know if that meeting is going to be fruitful or not, but I take the meeting because it's an opportunity to learn and it's an opportunity to be generous and share. And I will tell you, um, I have been on numerous podcasts because of introductions from others. I have, you know, at one time, somebody asked me to meet someone who, um, who needed some advice with their business. I didn't know who this person was. I said, yes, of course, I'll be helpful. A female entrepreneur, this individual happened to be a very senior journalist who has a TV program. We talked about her work when we met. And at the end, I told her about my book and she said, come be on my show. I mean, those are wonderful opportunities and they're serendipitous only because I said yes to be helpful to someone else. The TEDx talk that I did would never have happened if it weren't for a young woman who came to me for advice and we connected and had a wonderful coffee and that was followed up by an absolutely lovely lunch. And three months later, she said, Pat, I saw a call for speakers for TEDx. I'd like to nominate you. How kind and wonderful that was. And I thank Victoria for it every time I tell the story. She, I helped her certainly. And that was the idea. And I expected nothing in return, but she gave me a beautiful gift. And I think in the process of meeting people and being helpful to people, you will receive gifts like that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, you know, that's so much a part of why we do what we do at Elevate as well is just, you know, you have to lean into that, that community and meeting people and understanding, um, the multitude of ways that, you know, we influence each other's lives and careers. But one thing that I've personally noticed is that, you know, oftentimes really good at getting started, meaning, okay, identifying some people we want to meet and, you know, doing the outreach, getting a call. Terrible about the follow-up. You know, how many times have you met with one person one time and you never hear from them again? And that's just such a lost, you know, opportunity there. So how would you recommend people stay in touch and, and con continue to connect with people and cultivate that relationship? Christy, I think that's an excellent um, question. And, and I think the whole process of networking is a three-legged stool. The first is to make a commitment to doing it. The second is to connect, to actually meet people. And the third, and honestly, the stool falls over unless you have the third, is to continue the process. I call them my three C's, commit, connect, and continue. The continue part is so very important. And it starts very simply with the, you know, the first thing is just follow up, a quick follow up email right away to say it was great meeting you. 
And if, you know, during that conversation, there was something else to be done, an introduction, a circling back, make sure you do it, you know, follow through on that. And, and, you know, I'm not perfect, but I really try hard to be good at that myself. And then create whatever systems that you can to try to continue that conversation. Sometimes it's as simple as marking your calendar in six months, putting it on your calendar and say, reach out to Christy Wallace and see how she's doing. Um, Or make sure, again, immediately link into the person because I'm a huge fan of technology. I absolutely love LinkedIn. LinkedIn makes it much easier to stay in touch, to stay top of mind because LinkedIn will tell you when somebody makes a job change or posts an interesting story or has a birthday. And you can easily say happy birthday. I'm a huge fan of birthdays, by the way. And just saying that is a nice thing to do. And it takes all of two seconds. The other thing that I think is an important thing to do is to at least once a year, reach out to your network and just say happy new year or whatever time of year you want to reach out and, and, and just say, this is what's going on in my life. Hope you're well. If you're in the area, please give a ring or love to, you know, be back in touch with you. You could do it in a general way. You could do it in a more customized way. But I think being thoughtful about that is important because staying top of mind is half the challenge. And we're all inundated with information and emails and, you know, lots of things to do. But an occasional hello from somebody that you met, especially if it's, you know, I thought of, I'm sending you an article because I thought of you. That's a simple thing to do, but it requires a little bit of an awareness of, you know, what is valuable to somebody? What might somebody be interested in? And you could do it more or less proactively, but I think it is well worth the effort to be thoughtful about that. Thank you for all of that really important advice. And I, and I do encourage our listeners to uh, lean into your network, to building relationships, and, and to think of it as a long-term endeavor. Um, we oftentimes are great at when we need something, but uh, which, I, which I totally understand. But as you cultivate these relationships and you always have someone that you can turn to and get advice or support. Um, but I want to shift gears a little bit, Pat, and, and talk about you being an advisor and an investor because it's it's a key, key conversation uh, that doesn't get amplified enough around how we as women, um, you know, are, become investors. There's not enough women who, who are investing um, and, and how we really put our money behind companies that share our values or leaders who share, you know, our, our same goals and, and same challenges. So uh, how did you get into investing and, and how do you pick companies that you really want to support? Sure. Um, Well, look, I got into investing um, over 30 years ago, and I must admit it was purely serendipity. I was at business school. I had already taken a job for the summer between my two years and a company I hadn't heard of reached out to me to come and talk to them. And I'm dating myself. I couldn't text them and say, sorry, I have a job. Um, I went in person to cancel that interview. And the short of it was that I ended up working a little piece of my summer for that firm. Um, I worked part-time my second year at business school, and I joined them full-time. And it is a global growth equity firm. And so I learned how to invest um, you know, as on the job. That, that was my work. And, and it's been a wonderful experience. I think um, you know, what I loved about investing is that you really get to think about businesses in a different way uh, and, and markets in a very different way. Uh, since I have been on my own the last six, a uh, little bit more than six years, I have uh, looked for companies based on the following criteria. Christy, it's really important to me that I invest behind companies and teams that I believe in. So, and, and I've listed all the companies I've invested on my LinkedIn profile. I am super proud of each of them. They are doing um, things and providing products and services that I think are important. They're looking at old problems in new ways, and they're run by people that I really respect and I care for and actually really like spending time with. And I think to start as an investor, if that's not been your career, there are so many ways um, to, to participate. First of all, talk to others and see what they're doing, because again, sometimes people can pull you in and say, 
you know, come to this uh, angel demo day or this uh, accelerator demo day and come meet some entrepreneurs with me. Or, you know, I have somebody who is launching a business and they're raising a round. Is that something that you might be interested in? Uh, I, I think, yeah. And there are lots of networks for women to invest together, especially in the New York metropolitan area, but most major cities, I would think that would be the case. So if you have an interest in that, find those opportunities. Those are those are private company investments. They do have some element of risk, but it is interesting because you get to know the companies um, in that way. Obviously, you can invest in the public markets and people have opportunities uh, to do that as well. And I encourage, encourage anyone who doesn't have that background to start the process by reading books and self-educate and, again, talking to other people, learn from other people. Um, so I, I think, you know, that's kind of an important element of it. But how do opportunities come to me? Honestly, that's been the easiest part because I talk to a lot of people and I meet a lot of people and good people know other good people. And if you're willing to be helpful, others will be very happy and willing to introduce you to their network. Certainly those people who are looking for funders or could benefit from having an advisor who has um, investing experience. Are there any industries or uh, innovations that you're particularly excited about right now? Um, I love the health and wellness space. Um, I think it's a really important one. I think there are um, many who are innovating in that area. Um, I really like uh, anything that has some aspect of technology to it. Uh, I And occasionally I will invest behind just people who I think are incredible people that I just can't help myself because I think they're wonderful and I like spending time with them and I want them to succeed. And I you know, I believe they're onto something, even if it doesn't happen to fall into a specific industry area. Quick lightning round. Uh, so you told us that you are an introvert already, but like, are you full on introvert? I oftentimes get like, I'm an ambivert, I'm this, I'm that. Like, tell me, tell me how you truly identify. I, uh, I am perfectly fine being by myself. And I actually really love talking to people one one at a time. Large rooms with lots of people cause me to uh, to have some anxiety. So I understand that when other people go through that, and I have overcome that by thinking all I have to do is meet just one or two people. And honestly, it's a huge success, even in a very large room, if you connect in a in a special way with one or two people. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. What is your favorite day of the week? I like Thursdays. <laughs> I really do. Kind of near the end of the week, looking forward to Friday and the weekend. So that's my favorite day. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Early bird. <laughs> lucky, lucky one. <laughs> uh, who would be your dream dinner guest? Can I have three? Yeah, sure. I'll give you three interesting ones. Taylor Swift, Michelle Obama, and Melinda Gates. All at the same time? Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. I bet, I, bet you, I bet you those three have been in a room at dinner together. So I think it would be such a blast. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 I would be too excited. <laughs> do you have any pet peeves? Yeah, I do. I don't like people who complain and don't do. I like people who do things, get things done. Yeah, I always say if you're going to come to me with a complaint, come to me with a solution. I agree. What is uh, your morning staple? What do you need to get going in the morning? I um, I really like to get some exercise. It makes such a big difference to me. Um, so, uh, you know, my, and I also like to do Wordle and Mathler. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what is the second one? Math what? Mathler. Mathler. Okay, I'm going to have to try that one out. Uh, yeah, uh, I have I have three more if you want more. I didn't want to overwhelm you. What, what are they? Nerdle, which is also a math one. Quartle, Q-U-O-R-D-L-E, which is four wordles at the same time. And worldler, which is you see a, um, a country and you have to guess what it is. Oh my goodness, so fun. I know I love all these. I, I start my day off with the, the games and stuff too, and I always think it's fun. I love it. And any uh, favorite recent reads? I really love to read. It's one of my favorite things. Um, and I would cite The Ministry for the Future by Kim Robinson. 
And I selected this book and heard of this book because both Bill Gates and Barack Obama had this book on their list. It's a science fiction book, um, and one of the themes is related to climate change, and I'm learning a lot. Okay, I'm writing that down. I love reading too. Uh, Do you have a top self-care practice? Um, Drinking water. Like, make sure you hydrate. That's been a recent important practice. Two large glasses of water to start the day. And then a final thought you want to leave with our listeners today? Yes. Um, I would love your listeners to think about who is the one person they should reach out to that they haven't talked to or seen in the last two years. I mean, I think the pandemic has had that effect on people. And I think it's wonderful to think about just one, maybe two or three people that you should reach out to and say, hey, how are you doing? All right. I love that. Well, Pat, thank you so much for joining us on today's podcast. It was great learning from you and being inspired. And yes, I second Pat's advice. Uh, Reach out to someone you haven't talked to in a while. Re-engage and let the magic happen. Thank you. Well, that was great. I loved that. Yeah, that was, that was very interesting. I like, I, I really, really enjoy the interviews Christy does. So I'm, I'm happy we still have a few of them for our listeners. Um, so. Absolutely. Pat was incredible. We learned so much from, from all of these episodes and I, know. I love listening in. It's so great. I always think of Elevate as, you know, a place where you meet people you don't know you should know. Yes. It's, it's not, you know, necessarily the celebrity or the, you know, whatever you want, but it's these incredibly smart, incredibly knowledgeable, incredibly kind people who you absolutely should know. You just don't know that they're around. Yeah, exactly. You always hear the same kind of names over and over again in the spotlight and they are incredible too. Don't get me wrong, but like you said, there are so many other people out there who are doing incredible things too. And it's important to, to lift them up, lift those voices up. A hundred percent. So if you want to come and meet some other people you should know, and you don't know, you should know, (laughs) you should join me at the executive roundtables. These uh, are hosted every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Next one is actually going to be a, a network community time. So it's going to be more about interacting with the group and getting to know some people. So I, I hope to see you there. JP, what's coming up on the Rising Leader front? Yeah, so this week, um, the Rising Leader is which meets Thursdays at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, we're talking about using the star method to shine your light. So it's a way to really get your um, your accomplishments out there and really learn how to capture your successes and your achievements so that other people can see that too. Um, and then the week after that, uh, it's uh, finding your zone of genius. Yeah, you know that if you feel like you there's more potential that you aren't reaching yet and you know that you're destined for something great, but you just don't know how to get there, that, that'll be our topic for that day. So it's some really great and inspiring topics coming up. And the speakers are wonderful, both Elevate members. And I love too when speakers are also attendees of the roundtables. So the other attendees also, you know, already recognize them. And um, it's just great to see that kind of full circle moment. They come back to host. It's so nice to have that. It's, It's real community, right? Like it's where you see those bonds and people come and cheer them on. And it's just, it's, it's so, it's so special. Yeah. Well, and now for our History Makers segment, we'd like to celebrate people who are, you know, making strides, paving way. And some of these are, you know, sad that we are seeing some firsts still, but we will continue to celebrate them because it is important to shine the light on these people and make sure that we continue to have more barrier breakers. (laughs) <laughs> and so Nicole Anapu Mann will become the first N- Native American woman to fly into space. So cool. I know that Marcella knows that I'm a big space nerd. You are. You, you, I still see. Don't, do you still have on Slack your photo with the uh, <laughs> astronaut helmet? 
Yeah. Yeah. I've got an astronaut helmet on. That's my Slack profile. <laughs> Mine is when I was a kid and, it, and I'm wearing a Daisy Duck hat. So. Just the cutest. So <laughs> sweet. Very cool, Nicole. Um, and then we have Michelle Yeoh, who became the first Asian artist to receive AFI's honorary doctorate in fine arts, which is incredible. I love that. It's like, it feels like that should not be a first. Yes. <laughs> Elise Berger became the first person from Vermont to be named to the USA Baseball Women's National Team. Very cool. Rupali Desai was confirmed by the Senate to become the first South Asian American judge on the Ninth Circuit. Again, something that feels like it shouldn't be the first at this point. And congratulations to Rupali. Congratulations to her. Carissa Glanton created Florida's first Black women-owned selfie showroom. What is a selfie showroom? I don't know. Like a gallery? Like a like a museum gallery? I don't selfies? know, but I really need to look this up. Yeah, this sounds like something we'd be interested in. And then to wrap us up, uh, Nikama Leibowitz, who became the first woman featured in Israel's following in their light program, which is awesome. That's great. Well, thank you, JP, for joining me today. This was fun. It's always fun catching up with you. I know. This was really great. Thanks for having me. And you'll, so be, you'll be my co-host next week as well. Uh, when here, yeah. we talk to Ngozika Kiki, she is amazing. That inter- I did that interview, so I can tell you she's amazing. We had so much fun. Um, she's a marketing consultant turned socially conscious fashion designer. I'm not going to lie. When we were talking and doing that interview, I was on her website trying to buy a, <laughs> a jumpsuit from her because it looked so comfy and so beautiful and just like exactly what I want but they were sold out on my size. <laughs> she marries the idea of fashion and philanthropy, and um, she competed on season three of an international design reality show, Design Genius, in 2017. Her company proudly donates a portion of all revenue to organizations that work with survivors of sexual assault and domestic abuse. And we go into a little bit of her history and why she's doing this, and I really can't wait for you guys to listen. She sounds incredible. I can't wait for that to come out. Yeah. So we'll talk to her and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks so much for listening to Elevate. If you like what you hear, help a girl out. Subscribe to the Elevate podcast on iTunes. Give us five stars and share your review. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Elevate NTWK. That's Elevate Network. And become a member. You can learn all about membership and all the great things that Elevate Network is doing at our website, www.elevatenetwork.com. That's E-L-L-E-V-A-T-E network.com. And special thanks to our producer, Catherine Heller. She rocks. And to our voiceover artist, Rachel Griesinger. Thanks so much and join us next week.